Hey guys, we're gonna keep reading in twerp, not twerk, twerp. Um, when you left off the last time, um, Julian had just witnessed an accident. So we'll see what happens. Hey, I called in to him. Are you all right? He didn't answer. He just kept moaning. Hey, hey, I said, I'm all right, he mumbled, but he had a bad cut on his forehead. I could see the blood under his hands. You should get out of there, I told him. No, man, I'll be all right. Just let me be. But you're hurt. Let me be, man. I wasn't listening to him. I started tugging on the driver's side door, except it was jammed shut. I couldn't budge it. The guy looked like he might have been able to kick the door out himself. He was young, maybe 20 years old, and the huge afro made him look strong. Getting out of the car, though, seemed like the last thing on his mind. He was staring at his right hand, which was covered with blood, as if he was trying to figure out where whose blood he was looking at. That was when I heard the first siren. It was a couple of blocks away, coming from the direction of Northern Boulevard. Oh, man, I heard him moan. He tried to straighten up, but it was no use. Just keep still, I told him. The cops will get you out. Oh, man. They'll be here in a minute, I said, but I've got to go. Who are you? I'm, uh, I, I saw what happened. There was a kid who ran out in front of me. Sorry, I didn't see that. I just saw the crash. It was the kid's fault. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. He turned his head to face me. It took a lot of effort. I wanted to cheese it, but I felt like I should look him in the eye, like I owed it to him. There was blood gushing out of his forehead clotting on his eyebrows and running down the bridge of his nose. As soon as he got a good look at me, he knew who I was. But he wasn't even mad, he muttered under his breath. Oh, man. Then he just kind of smiled. I have to go, I, told, I said to him. You're a fast little dude. I'm so sorry. For a white boy, I mean. Really, I have to go. Do what you got to do. As soon as he said that, I took off across Parsons Boulevard and ran as fast as I could up 34th Avenue. I wasn't a half block away when I heard the first police car pull up, but I didn't look back. It was like the story in the Bible where the guy's wife looks back at Sodom and Gomorrah and God turns her into a pillar of salt. That was how I felt. Like if I looked back, the cops were going to figure out what happened and come after me which I guess doesn't have much to do with the pillar of salt thing. Now that I think about it, except it shows why you shouldn't look back. But here's the kicker. It turned out the car was stolen. The guy came out of the accident all right, but he wound up in jail. I found out from the cops themselves. Two of them showed up in a squad car the next morning asking around for witnesses. I was feeling real guilty and thinking about telling the truth. But then one of them mentioned the stolen car. And at that point, I decided to lie through my teeth. Probably I should have told the truth. But what was the point? He wasn't in trouble because he'd crashed the car. He was in trouble because he'd stolen the car. I had nothing to do with that. The crash was only the reason he got caught. Still, it's not as if I felt good about it. That was the last time I raced a car up Parsons Boulevard. Hmm. Okay, the next chapter is called Quentin's Eyebrows. This is taking place on January 31st, 1969. You should have seen the look on Lonnie's face when I told him I was getting out of doing a book report on Julius Caesar by writing stories about myself. He didn't even believe me until I showed him what I had so far. He read the entire notebook, start to finish. And when he handed it back to me after school, he was real impressed. Just made me feel good. Lonnie's not the kind of guy who blows smoke. He tells you the truth, whether it's going to hurt or not. Getting a thumbs up from Lonnie meant more to me than getting an A on an English assignment, if that's what you decide to give me, Mr. Selkirk, hint, hint. There was only one thing I wrote that Lonnie didn't like. He said I made it sound as if the pigeon dying was his fault, which it wasn't. I was the one who chucked the rock, so I'm the one who killed the pigeon. 
Lonnie only put the idea in my head. Now that that's cleared up, I've got another story to tell. Lonnie's the one who reminded me of it when he read about the writer's block I had last week. He said I should write about the time Quick Quentin lost his eyebrows. The thing about Quick Quentin is that he's just a great guy. That's an ironical nickname, by the way. He's a slow runner. Plus, he talks kind of slow, but he understands what he has to understand. He lives in the Hampshire house down by Union Street, which is also where Eric the Red and Howie Wartnose live. That's not Howie's real name, obviously. His real name is Wurtsburg, but Lonnie called him Wartnose once and it stuck, even though he has a regular nose. That's our group, Lonnie, me, Quick Quentin, Eric the Red, because he has red hair, Howie Wartnose, and Shlomo Shlomo, because his mom always calls him twice for dinner. Lonnie's the one who thinks up nicknames for us. So, so far I don't have one, unless you count Julian Twerp. He called me that a couple of years ago after I intercepted a pass he threw during a football game. He was just frustrated. He didn't mean anything by it and it never stuck. I'm sure it only came to him because twerp sounds like my last name, Twersky, but it hurt, kind of, since that's who also what Amelia calls me when she gets in a bad mood, twerp. Anyway, I'm sure Lonnie will come up with a good nickname for me sooner or later. That's what he does. It's one of the things that keeps us tight as a group. I mean, it's not like we're an official club. You don't get a membership card or a decoder ring. It's nothing like that. But it's hard for an outsider to join in because there's so much history. The time Quentin lost his eyebrows is a good example. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, um, save the good part for the next. Um, tell me how Julian got his um, first nickname. How did he get the nickname of Twerp? <laughs> 